Hello everyone, today we are going to look at factorization by difference of squares. Let's take a look at some success criteria for applying difference of squares. Okay. Now, uh, we have actually learned four different methods of factorization. Okay. There will be common factors, uh, multiplication frame, difference of squares, which is what we are currently learning now, and grouping. Okay, so uh, in total, there will be four different factorization techniques that we can actually apply. Each of them, they will have some unique characteristics. Okay, so in order to be able to apply difference of squares successfully, you need to know when is the situation that you can use difference of squares. Okay, because if you are not able to identify the question type, then you might be using the wrong method. So it's very important that you know uh, when is the situation that you can apply. Right. And uh, once you know the situation that you can apply, the next thing you need to do is you need to memorize this formula. Right? It doesn't take very long, but you need to memorize this. Right? Because if you if you don't memorize this formula, uh, you will not be able to apply the method. As simple as that. Right? So it's very essential that you memorize this formula. A square minus B square is equal to A plus B times A minus B. Right. Uh, we will actually go through later what do all these things means. Okay, but it's very important that you can memorize this formula and know how to apply it so that we can apply the difference of squares successfully. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at a situation where we can actually use factorization by difference of squares. Now, first of all, your t question right it has to contain only two terms. Okay, for questions involving fact, uh, difference of squares, your question can only contain two terms. Okay, uh, second thing, uh, it only works for question involving subtraction. Okay, if a question is involving addition, uh, we cannot apply difference of squares. Okay, and lastly, uh, you must be able to identify perfect squares that are involved in the question. Uh, later, we'll look at some examples for you to have a under, better understanding of what perfect squares are. So uh, if all these criteria are satisfied, then we can apply the formula a square minus b square equals to a plus b, a minus b in order to factorize it using difference of squares. Well, that's the understanding for uh, the difference of squares. All right. All right, let's take a look at an example now. So for this question, we have x square minus 16. Okay, so there are two terms involved. First term is x squared, second term is 16. So criteria 1 is satisfied. Okay, second, subtraction involved, okay, minus. So we can also apply difference of square. Lastly, okay, x squared is already a perfect square. 16 is not exactly a perfect square yet, okay, but we can actually change it to a perfect square. So how do we change 16 into a perfect square? You can press this in your calculator, square root of 16, and you will get 4. So 16 is actually equals to 4 squared. We can rewrite 16 as 4 squared. Huh? So this is how we can express it as a perfect squared. So now we will do that now. x squared minus 16 is actually the same as x squared minus 4 squared. Okay? Now if you recall back your formula, a squared minus b squared is equals to a plus b, a minus b. Okay, I can also identify the a and b from this question. The a value will be x and the b value will be 4 for this question. So if we apply the formula a squared minus b squared equals to a plus b a minus b, okay, then the answer will be x plus 4, okay, referring to a and b here, and x minus 4, again referring to a and b here. So we can write down the answer now, x plus 4 x minus 4 and this will give us the answer for this question All right okay let's take a look at another example okay now we have 49 x square minus 25 y square okay same thing we try to identify whether we can use difference of squares okay first thing two terms are involved here okay second subtraction is involved All right so it's okay lastly 49 x square can we express as a perfect square Okay, yes, right, because if we square root 49, we get 7. Same thing for 25y square. If we square root 25, we will get 5. Right, so this can be expressed as a perfect square. These two terms can be expressed. Okay, so all the criteria are satisfied. We can apply difference of squares. Okay, let's do that now. 
So now for the 9x square minus 25y square, okay, it will be equals to 7x bracket square minus 5y bracket square. Okay, we identify the a and b. So 7x is the a, 5y is the b. Right. Now we will apply the difference of square, so we will get 7x plus 5y, 7x minus 5y. And that's how we get the answer. Okay, easy, right? Okay, let's move on. Okay, for the third example. Okay, now right now we also have a similar question. Okay, 2x squared minus 1 to 8. Two terms are involved. Okay, uh, this time subtraction is also involved okay but notice two are we able to express two as a perfect square we can't really do that right okay and one two eight we can't really express it as a perfect square as well so right now what we need to do is we want to see whether there's a possibility of having taking out common factors okay so observe two and one two eight are there any common factors okay there are so because there are we will take out common factors first Right. So before we uh, actually try and identify whether we can use difference of squares first, right? Because this one it doesn't meet the third criterion. There's no perfect squares involved here. Right? Then we have to think of something else. We will, we have to think of whether we can actually apply our common factors to get the answer. Right? So let's apply our common factors now. Okay. So what is the common factor here? Two, right? So we'll take out two. And then we'll end with x squared minus 64. Okay. Can we actually express 64 as a perfect square? We can, right? Okay, because square root of 64 is equals to 8. Right? So 64 is actually equals to 8 squared. Okay, we can express 64 as 8 squared now. Okay, so we will do that now. So it's 2 bracket x squared minus 8 squared. In this case, the a will be x, the b will be 8. Okay, apply your formulas now. So it will be 2 bracket x plus 8, x minus 8. And that's how we get the answer. Okay. okay, one more example. Okay, let's take a look at the question involving uh, higher powers, x4 and uh, fractions. Okay. Now, when we are handling fractions, the idea is the same. Okay, uh, so doesn't matter whether it's a fraction or not, we just handle them separately. We'll handle the numerator and the denominator. So to express 4 over 9 as a perfect square, we just need to square root 4 and we need to square root 9. Okay, so square root 4 is actually equals to 2. Square root 9 is actually equals to 3. So we can express 4 over 9 as 2 thirds bracket square okay that's how we do it so just treat them separately and you'll be able to uh, express the fraction into a perfect square i huh? just need to treat them separately now for x to the power of 4 is the same idea okay uh, okay x to the power of 4 is actually the same as x square square okay because if you square an x square okay uh, you you actually get uh, x to the power of 4 Right. So to express x to the power 4 as a perfect square, you just need to square it. Okay, I mean you just need to uh, divide the power by 2. Now that's all you need to do. Right. Okay, let's take a look at how we uh, change this question now. So 81x to the power 4 minus 4 over 9. Okay. We can rewrite it as 9x square squared. Okay. This is how we express it as a perfect square. For the fraction, it will be 2 third squared. Right? Okay. Now, this whole thing will be our A. This whole thing will be our B. Okay. So, to write it out, it will be 9x squared plus 2 third and 9x squared minus 2 third. Right? Okay. So, uh, even though 9x squared is a perfect square and uh, there's a subtraction involved here, right? But because 2 third, we cannot express it as a perfect square anymore. Uh, we cannot apply difference of squares here, right? So this will be our final answers. Okay, are we clear about this? Yeah, so uh, that's all for today's learning. Hope you have learned something. And uh, we'll see you next time.